Hi gang, Scott here. Skylum issued an update to Luminar AI 1.0.1, so very small numbers there, but there's one very big change that I want to walk you through. And because of that big change, I figure I may as well share a few of the other things that have been updated in this release. Most of it's bug fix kind of stuff, but this one very big interface change I want to cover with you. And it's cosmetic, it's not functional, so everything still works the same. Things should just organize a little better. And real quick, if you're thinking about adding Luminar AI to your toolkit, check the show notes below. There's an offer code there. Save you a little bit of money. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Gives me a little bit of support. So Luminar AI 1.0.1, the big change is in the edit module. I'll go into the edit module. And instead of tool groups, right over on the right-hand side, we used to have essentials, creative, portrait, professional. Well, now we just have a single monolithic group of every editing tool just all arranged in a big column here. They're still grouped by essentials and then creative and then down the bottom here portrait and professional. But everything's been collapsed into a single pane and so uh, I, I kind of get that. There's, you know, there's value to that. It's a little different than what you may have been familiar with. If you came from Luminar 4, this is quite a, a big change because you get used to those different groups. But now everything's in one place and um, ultimately for me it's it's less clicking around, which is kind of a good thing, but it's it's a, it's a kind of a big deal. Um, and yeah, it can, yeah, sure it helps. You can see the AI things a little bit more, but mainly everything you're looking for is going to be in this one pane. And then as far as local masking, that is still its own group. The icon's just farther up on the top. We still have our basic and texture. And of course you have history, but this is the really big change that happened in 1.0.1, a single pane in edit with all of the editing tools. Now all the tools still work the same way. There is one tool that got a, a bit of a refresh as far as its interface, the way it operates, and that's the toning tool. Let me show you that. So toning, this used to be a much more uh, vertical organization. There were different subsections for shadows, highlights and then ultimately balance. Well, that's gotten collapsed. So we had duplicated sliders. We had a saturation slider and a hue slider for the shadows and for the highlights. Well, now we just have the buttons to go between them. So depending on what you have selected, I have shadows selected. I can add saturation of a tone and then add some type of tint to it. So we start with saturation and then set the tint for it. So these sliders have been reversed. It used to be a little awkward. You had to increase saturation before setting the color and the sliders should flow with the workflow. So now they do that. And then we have highlights. We can do the same thing. We can set a different tint. And that is just a nice collapsing of the tool. Again, less moving around. I'm not having to go down to more sliders and back up. I'm very tight here working crisply working smoothly in one single area. One other little change that happened in edit is tooltips have returned. So if you hover over these various tool icons, you get this little add mask or disable tool, reset filter. So if you're never quite sure what one of those little icons mean, you can hover over it now. You get a little hint, uh, you know, a nice cosmetic thing. But uh, the next change, this is more subtle, another user interface change, but a nice one, especially if you don't have a trackpad or some way of scrolling horizontally. And that's back in the templates module. In templates in the for this photo area, we get the suggestions that Luminar AI makes for our photos. And right now I'm using my trackpad and scrolling horizontally. Well, you'll notice these small arrows appear. If you don't have a horizontal scroll ability, you're not using a touch interface. These now make it much easier to move through the different collections of templates being offered to you. In the previous release, the first release, there was a tiny little scroll bar down here that it was almost invisible. It was really, really hard to see. Now that's more obvious. You've got arrows. You can click on them and move through. So that's another tweak to the interface that uh, is, is helpful. And I, I do see value in this, especially if you're on a machine that does not use a touch interface. The last change that I'll share with you is kind of back in our catalog mode. We go back into our catalog and the add photo button, right? 
Well, now you can add a folder and add an image. They changed the interface here because evidently uh, there was still people with confusion about, well, am I adding a folder of images? Am I adding a single image? Well, that's one other uh, more in-your-face kind of change. When you click on plus, you'll notice that this pops up as opposed to the small little text menu. Then after that, the rest of the stuff in 1.0.1 is primarily bug fixes. I think they're, uh, the erase tool, you can do um, more granular undos, at least on Mac OS. I don't know if that change has made it all the way into the Windows version yet. And a whole bunch of bug fixes have been fixed. But the, the big change is that edit module, big monolithic list of all your editing tools, less jumping around, more scrolling and clicking, which is usually faster than sliding around and having to find a different group of tools. So I uh, hope you found this uh, little tour helpful to uh, get you used to the, the new changes. Got any questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.